So if you want to turn on your video, uh, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any ladies in the room? Um, feel free. And then if you're not talking, uh, turn your microphone off. And just like last coaching sessions this is all about asking questions and uh, sharing what you know, and even answering questions, because I don't know everything. And uh, for the first few minutes, um, I like to do a presentation because I'm always working on something. Um, so Joseph, if you can turn off your microphone, that'd be great. And then uh, I'm always working on like adding content to our master class and uh, other courses and things like that. And um, so I want to do a presentation, take a few minutes, and then we'll open it up for discussion. I uh, hope you're all involved in that. Um, cool. So we had a ton of people um, register. I think we went to 40, but uh, looks like we have the core with us, the core group of fellas. Awesome. Um, so the two URLs, uh, my favorite URLs are the masterclass, masterclass URL, natchee.org slash masterclass, and natchee.org slash webinar. And one of the cool things about the webinar um, URL. We have internet webinars. We're starting to put up um, all of those sessions from the upcoming online conference. Uh, we were supposed to be in California, having a lot of fun in California, um, but uh, COVID uh, changed all that. So next year, October 2021, um, we have the hotel and the convention site all ready to go. But uh, we decided this year for 2020 to go online and do a virtual conference. And so if you wanted to attend um, any of the sessions, they're all here. So I hope you can see that. Um, so the first one is uh, you can scan it. It's electric. So you, there's the Pro Inspectors Convention 2020 online. Um, and you can just register for that. Um, or any of them. So there's, um, I don't know how many sessions there are. So right now we have all of these, but I think there's like 20 sessions or something. It's all free online. I would register for all of them uh, so that you can um, go in and out of any of them. If you uh, like go into uh, John Gillum's uh, uh, presentation, um, he's a real estate agent and he tells home inspectors um, how to market themselves to real estate agents. And so it's, that's this one here. But if you think it's boring, you can just pop out and go to Troy Bishop's maybe, or Jim Crump's about sewer scopes. So I would go to um, this URL, where am I? Natchez.org slash webinar and sign up for the um, sessions. Free online. If you don't attend, it's okay. We'll send you a link so you can watch it later. Um, if you do attend, um, we're going to have some, um, some formalized uh, registration processes so that you can get the CE. So we have state CE approvals coming. And uh, for anything that InterNACHI does, you can upload um, the CE into your education log. So go to natchiorg slash webinar and click all those things. Sound good? Any questions about the convention coming up? It's online. And the next live in-person convention is uh, 2021. And we'll send out uh, information about that. All right, I wanna do a little presentation. There's a phone call listener. I'm gonna um, pass on that. So you gotta come in live. So uh, I wanna talk about the Home Inspector's Basic Math for Success. And then we can talk about it afterwards and ask questions, but again, we can talk about anything you want. Um, but I had some thoughts about the basic math for success. It's belief plus attitude plus preparation plus value equals success. And I don't know if you know, but uh, I actually have a teaching certificate. I was a high school math teacher for a couple of years. Um, so I think about math a lot. So let's learn about success from a master inspector and two, um, home inspection vendors uh, from our home inspection industry about the math for success, including Brody, my buddy Brody Lotz from Ampro Inspections, who built a successful home inspection business by cold calling 
um, Kevin Wagstaff from Spectora Software about having enough confidence to invite real estate agents to an online coffee meeting. And also Rodrigo Gomez from Elite Inspections in Southern California, who actually asks real estate agents and his clients to snap an Instagram picture um, in front of the house that he just inspect. So I've got a few dozen slides in just a few minutes. So hold on, here we go. Let's learn about each factor in this math uh, calculation and how InterNACHI business resources and marketing strategies can help you in each category to deepen your belief, to build your attitude of positive anticipation, I call it, as you make time to, pre to prepare for your inspection work and as you deliver fantastic perceived value to your clients. These are the four basic math factors and they're all related to being assertive, being assertive in your belief, being assertive in your attitude, being assertive in your preparation, being sort of in your value, not passive and not aggressive and not, uh, not just average or adequate, not terrible. A lot of people say, well, how was the movie? Yeah, it wasn't terrible, it wasn't bad. You don't wanna be that either. You wanna be assertive because assertive, being assertive is a marketing strategy and a style of conducting business that we see and many successful home inspection businesses. So be assertive, be confident, decisive, self-assured, sure, certain, firm, and positive. Brody Lotz of Ampro Inspections is a great example of a home inspector who is assertive in his belief, preparation, and value. He did a recent webinar um, at natchiorg slash webinars where Brody talked about being assertive in cold calling believing in his company and boosting his inspection business. And if we just take a clip out of that, let's see how this works. And I'm telling you that cold calling is the most cost effective way to get out there and get your name known and sell your business. So lots of people don't like to impose themselves on others, right? And that's one thing that I hear a lot is that, well, you know, I don't like to be a burden on people. I don't like to annoy people. And we saw that statistic. Well, the thing is, is like, if you believe in your product, if you believe in your business, why aren't you out there telling people that? They're not going to magically find you. Or they're not going to, you know, you can have the greatest website in the world and you can be the best inspector in the world. No one is going to buy your services if they don't know about you. All right, so another reason why people hate cold calling is because they don't like rejection. And that's a normal, uh, that's a normal feeling. I don't like to be rejected either. Uh, but guess what? Back in high school, you know, the, 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 uh, that girl that you want to go out with or for you ladies out there, that guy that you want to go out to the prom with, uh, they went with who, whoever asked them. If you didn't ask them, they weren't going to the prom with you, unless you were lucky enough that they happened to ask you. All right, so someone. So he starts talking about asking people to do things, just cold calling and asking people to um, refer their clients to his business. So he's got the guts. Well, he's a military man, so. Uh, nothing shakes him. So he's assertive. So we want you to be assertive in your marketing. Tell people visually why you should be hired. And if you need help in your marketing, I talk about this a lot. You have an internet member marketing team who work for you and they can design every, anything you want in your marketing. And uh, I really like the, the uh, home maintenance book. Um, you can customize the cover of the home maintenance book. And the marketing team uh, upgraded their website, uh, finally. And, um, you know, I like the logos that they put up. So if you don't have a logo, or if you do have a logo and you want to redesign it, make it look really good, um, these illustrators and designers, man, they're really good. I, we're really proud of them. And there's honey inspections um, with the drone uh, feature on it. So you're not alone. You have an entire marketing team that works for you.
be assertive in your marketing, be assertive in your emails, your phone calls, and your website. And your emails, like promise to be on time. And your phone calls, pick up the phone and be totally confident that you're gonna convert this call into a scheduled job and that you can make the final decision to uh, maybe price the right on the phone, right? And you anticipate success in your inspection business when you pick up that phone. You don't know how many home inspectors, how many members I've called, and they don't even pick up the phone. And when they do, there's a bunch of noise in the background, they're shopping or something like that, and they pick it up just as if I was their buddy, right? They're using their personal phone as their business phone, and they pick it up, and they're not really serious. So be assertive in your website. Prove that you're the best inspector. Um, I don't know if you've seen my website. This is a fake website. Uh, I don't do home inspections for clients anymore, but uh, I teach from my website, my fake website. When I do a home inspection, there's usually a camera going. And this is pretty assertive. You found the best inspector. People land on a website, it's basically just to confirm that you exist and that they found an inspector to hire. So you might as well tell them that you found the best inspector. No one is going to a website to learn about what a home inspection is. That was 20 years ago. What is a home inspection? What's involved in a home inspection? What will I inspect? All they wanna know is basically price, hopefully they're not price shopping, or value. They're looking for the reason why you should be hired. And the, one of the main reasons why I should be hired is because I'm the best. And I can prove it, but by every, well, I have a page that says why I'm the best, right? I've performed a ton of inspections. I'm certified like crazy, right? I've got all of the certification logos. I have a buyback guarantee. I use infrared on every inspection. So you have to be assertive in your website. Give me the reasons why you think I should hire you. And then be assertive in your presentations. If you're doing presentations for real estate agents, we have all the resources you need to do a presentation at that URL, natchi.org slash presentations. You know, tell everyone in the next few minutes, not that you're thorough and that you take lots of pictures and that you have insurance or that you're even InterNACHI certified. No one cares that you're InterNACHI certified right? What they really care about is that they have a problem and they're wanting you to fix it. Or they have an, a situation, a concern, and they need you to address it. They need to move into a house that has no big problems. Are you the home inspector who could do that for them? Tell them why in just a few minutes. Don't go over what everyone else says. I am trained. I am certified. I do pictures, who cares about that? You have to be assertive in how you meet someone, especially for the first time, in how you talk during an inspection. You know, with a smile and a handshake, you only get one chance for a first impression. So be assertive in how you speak and communicate as you walk and talk during the inspection. For example, when you comment on an observed defect, you don't wanna be wishy-washy. You wanna be concise and clear with your words. If you start to say a lot of words about the hole in the roof and patty cake the truth and soften it, that only leads to trouble with your clients and their agents. And in relation to being assertive with your real estate agents, Kevin Wagstaff from Spectora Software did a recent webinar with me about inviting real estate agents to an online Zoom meeting, which takes some confidence. Kevin talked about that in this video all right um for those of you that you know that work with agents or in an area i know there's some areas that are going to be locked down a little longer than others so through may even where agents may still not want to meet with you face to face that's okay because if you have a backup of saying hey let's just do a quick zoom L would love to chat would love to see how i can help your business um love to see how you're doing um that really resonates and makes an impression with agents and zoom's free um, you can sign up for a free account and do unlimited meetings. Um, so to me, there's no excuse for not offering that up as an alternative. Um, and, and also, um, you, can, you don't have to think about doing it on your laptop. You can download the app and do a Zoom meeting on your phone. Yeah. And one, um, one kind of, like, I guess, if it takes the edge off of it or the, the nature to, or the, the, the instinct to feel 
kind of like you have to be completely buttoned up. It's like, hey, would love to just have coffee with you over Zoom. You could both be sitting there sipping your coffee, you know, at your at your breakfast table. So agents are really open to this. I want everyone to realize that. Like, like I think, I don't know what perception many inspectors have of agents. I know a ton of agents. I used to be one. I frequented them a lot. They love doing this technology thing. So it's like, and they're talking totally open to it. Even if the average agent is a 55 year old woman, they're pretty good. They're, they're, they tinker a lot. So be, you can feel okay saying, Hey, let's figure this out together. Like, trust me, your zoom's not going to work. It's not going to open up properly. Like if there's things that are going to happen, but if you just kind of can laugh it off and say, Hey, that's just technology. Like we're, we'll figure this out. You'll be fine. Um, Love Kevin. He's awesome from Spectora. Be assertive, like InterNACHI Certified Professional inspe Inspector, Rodrigo Gomez of Elite Inspections in Rialto, California. Um, if you check out his Instagram, it's instagram.com um, slash SoCal underscore Home Inspector. Um, I really like his Instagram. And uh, there he is. He, he's bold enough to ask his clients and real estate agents to actually hold up his marketing in his Instagram picture. Um, inside that, um, I asked them, inside that folder is uh, the home inspection report and the home maintenance book and other marketing materials. So it's customized. Uh, if you want internet marketing team to customize something for you, it's like a manila folder, right? And you put all of your client's stuff in there so it doesn't fall out. And then you take a picture of it, right? But he also like celebrates agents because if you're at a home inspection, man, that, you should be celebrating the agent's success. You know, you have to think about other folks. They're there because they just sold a house or is about, they're about to take it to closing, right? So what Rodrigo does is uh, he thanks Jenny Izumi of Berkshire Hathaway for your continued trust. You know, that's pretty amazing. He's celebrating his real estate agent's success. He does it in this one. Congrats in advance to the Felix family. Felix family just bought that house and Lucy Mayo of Compass, of Compass Pasadena. Um, I guess that's the real estate agent uh, in Pasadena. So um, be assertive in your, in your marketing in various ways, even in your social media. And be the root of being assertive is your belief, right? So do you believe actually in what you do? Do you believe that you provide a really valuable inspection service. You have something that people find so valuable and it makes their lives so much better that they're willing to give you their hard earned money. So do you believe in your company? Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that you're knowledgeable and skilled enough to do a great home inspection? Do you believe that your clients are better off by having hired you? And these aren't just ideas or tips uh, I put on a slideshow. These are beliefs that you have in your heart and your core without any doubt. A deep belief that the cost of your service is well worth it. A deep belief that your business does, what your business does for people is overwhelmingly valuable in comparison to the cost. Do you believe your home inspection company provides overwhelming perceived value to people? Because in general, in business, if the perceived value is greater than the cost, then it's a good decision. So the first factor is a deep belief. That's one of the factors in the basic math. Until you believe mediocre is all you are. So don't be ordinary. Don't be of moderate quality. Don't be not great or not terrible either. Just adequate. And don't be just adequate, right? Believe that what you do makes people's lives so much better, that what you do is so overwhelmingly valuable and that your business is exceptionally different from all the rest. You have to be different, amazingly different with overwhelmingly perceived value for your clients. So much value that people pay a dollar for your service. If you don't believe that you're different and valuable, don't expect to be exceptionally successful. The math doesn't work. And the second factor is attitude. Of positive anticipation. 
And that means, for example, you can open your emails every morning and just anticipate, expect new jobs to be scheduled for you. Because remember, you have online scheduling on your website, right? Your website is converting site visitors into clients while you're sleeping. So you expect emails in your inbox of scheduled jobs. And with certainty, you can answer the phone. Like I said, I've called many home inspectors and they do not answer the phone with any assuredness that they're the right inspector. They're just assuming that it's a uh, football night buddy calling up. To help you po positively anticipate new inspection jobs, InterNACHI sends members inspection job leads for free. Go to that URL, nachi.org slash inspection hyphen leads. Don't pay for leads. InterNACHI search engines finds people on the internet looking for a certified professional inspector in your zip codes. And we send those people to your website. So you have to update your profile with a website. And if you don't have a website, I can teach you how to make one in just a few minutes. And it's beautiful. So go to nachi.org slash inspection hyphen leads. And nowadays you don't have to spend two, four thousand dollars on a website. It's about 12 bucks a month for a really good website. They have templates and it's drag and drop. If you're writing an inspection report using software, you can build your own uh, website, business website. And after a potential client visits your website, they're going to call you to hire you, right? So with an attitude of certainty, you can answer that phone call, that business phone call, and convert that call with a client. How do you do it? What do you say? Well, we have a customer service and communications course, and there's a chapter in there called Phone Talk. We tell you exactly what to say and help you answer the phone and convert that phone call. So go to the education page at natchiorg slash education and type in customer. So here's our education page. Go to the search field on the left, type in customer. We've got two customer service and communications course courses. Call me now buttons. Internet she provides members with call me now buttons. And here's how it works. Visit my website, right? And the call to action button is right there, schedule now. And there's a couple options. You can schedule online on my website. I tell you when I'm available, you can call me at night from seven to nine. Some people are hesitant to call um, a business at night, but if you tell them, like I, I leave open dinner time, right? From four to seven and family time, but seven to nine, you can call me. I'll schedule a phone call. I'll schedule a call. Who wants to, anybody online? Can you go to Big Ben Inspections and call me now? Does anybody want to try that? See how it works? Let's see if it works. Anyone want to do it? You want to go to Big Ben Inspections and click call me now? Any volunteers? <laughs> Anybody clicking that button? Aaron, you're smiling a little bit. Are you doing it? Oh, Caleb, let's see. Let's see if I got my phone hooked up right. I was gonna show you. Oh, oh, let me show you. Oh, sorry. Let me just slide this over. A potential client, Caleb. Let's see. A potential client, Caleb, wants to call them. So I'm calling you. I'm going to call. So this is me calling a site visitor, right? I also get a text. Hey, what's up? <laughs> so Caleb visited my website, clicked the call me now button. And guess what happens? I get to talk to the person who's trying to schedule a home inspection and I can walk them through it or answer any questions. I push them over the edge. I convert that site visitor into a client. There's no way this person is going to leave my website and go somewhere else. 
because they have a button so I can call them immediately. And that's how it works. How much does it cost? Nothing. Actually, if you don't do it, it costs a lot. Imagine how many jobs you miss simply because you don't have a button. Uh, maybe there are other buttons out there. Uh, I don't know them. That's pretty neat. So you gotta be an InterNACHI member, uh, certified inspector, and use the call me now buttons. It works. So having an attitude of positive anticipation also means you can pull up into a driveway of any home inspection and be totally confident you can do a great inspection and look forward to finding the defects that a certified master inspector would be able to find, right? For a while, I would say it was the first year or two, I was, I was looking at the MLSs and just studying that thing and just uh, freaking out before I pulled up into the driveway. But after your first mm, 100 inspections, 200 inspections, after your, after your first 5,000 maybe, um, it's fun to find those defects that a master inspector would find, right? And if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to be a great inspector, well, we have the free online courses. And it's from any, uh, on any topic. So if you are weak in, um, what did I study over? Oh, CSST, right? So if you're, if you're weak in that area, the flexible pipe, the corrugated stainless steel tubing, um, do you know where it should be bonded? Do you know the two types? It's gotta be on the pipe or on the fitting. You know where it goes? If you're weak on that, right? No big deal. Um, go to our electric course or other resources that we have provided by the only accredited home inspector college in the world. That's internachi.edu, internachi.edu. You can go there now. Third factor in the math is preparation. Being totally prepared. For example, I finished my inspection day by prepping for my next day's jobs. I prep my inspection vehicle. I charge all my devices. I prep my inspection report, uh, which is on my phone as well. Um, type in the address or whatever you need to do. And I rehearse my client's names and their agent's names. Some are difficult to pronounce so that my first impression is the best. And I prepare myself to speak to my clients on their terms and the terms of how they're going to benefit from my home inspection service today. I prepare to meet my client's needs, fulfill their desires, address their concerns, and make sure they understand the quote unquote story of their house. I tell a story of their house, which includes the current condition of their house, right? I'm not there. That's how I believe I was so successful. With a smile, I don't care what the condition is, I simply tell a story with a smile of the condition of the home. There could be a hole in a roof and I come down to my client with a big smile on my face and I tell the story of the house. Not that they have now a serious problem and they can't move in. It's almost as if I told the story of them living in the house. They own the house. I'm assuming they're going through the clothes and I'm, they're coming into the house and they have to address this problem. Why? Because when it rains, it leaks. How are you going to get fixed? Well, you need a local roof inspector or, or a roof uh, contractor, right? Where are you going to get one? Well, you're probably, no, an agent, right? You have an agent right now who has a handful of roofing contractors, right? And I, I forced them to think about solutions as a homeowner in their new home. You know, I think that's what I did. I told the story of the home. Instead of going in and providing a list of things that could really screw things up for you, if you don't get them addressed. So I told the story of the house and they have an opportunity to get the defects fixed prior to moving in if they negotiate. There's a couple of ways to do that. But basically it was their home and I told the story of their home. So I prepare to make sure each of my clients win. I work, they win because I prepare. And the fourth factor is value. It's my favorite factor. You have to have undeniable, overwhelming, professional value perceived by your client. If you don't, or if you do, then they're willing to pull out a credit card so fast. So that's the 
kind of position I want to be in when I answer the phone, that they know that they're going to be overwhelmed with value, I basically just have to say yes. Because if the, if the perceived value is greater than the cost, it's a good decision. Provide so much clients, so, so much value that your clients are willing to provide five-star customer reviews for everyone to see. Ideally, those reviews would be video selfies of clients who testify on your behalf. I'm not sure if there's anything more value than a video testimonial from a client, a recent client. Informal, off the cuff, directly from them. They know how to do selfies. All you have to do is ask them, right? Like Brody said, just ask your client to help you. They'll know what to do. And in step three of the masterclass at that URL, we teach you how to get Google reviews, how your business reviews appear next to your listings in Google Maps and search, how to request views from clients with a short URL that's specific to your business and how to remind your clients to re leave reviews and be sure to reply to reviews to build trust and verify your business so your information is eligible to, to appear on Google search and maps and other services because only verified businesses can respond to customer reviews. So check out the masterclass and click down to um, that section in step three. So in the end, we want you to deepen your belief, belief uh, build your attitude, make time to prepare and deliver fantastic professional value that overwhelms your clients so they have no, no other choice but to hire you. And then you can be confident and assertive in your, in your business. Not knowing, not knowing what you should say or what you should do is the root of lacking confidence. So gaining in the knowledge of something is very important. It's very easy to do when you're a member of Internet HD because we have everything you need to know, everything you need to be successful all in one place at natchee.org slash everything and also in the master class. So I encourage you to be assertive in sort of your, in your words and your actions. Have the goal to be more confident, decisive, certain, and positive. Assertive is a marketing strategy and a style of business that we see in successful people. And here's the simple math for success as a home inspector. Belief plus attitude plus preparation plus value is success. One last tip that I keep hearing that's missing from a lot of businesses is follow-up. I just uh, purchased something um, online and I got a follow-up from that vendor on my phone. I was surprised, I was just really shocked. They called me to see how it's going. So for most home inspectors, they never follow up. They do a home inspection and they never speak to that client. That's insane. That's like no one ever eating at their favorite restaurant more than once. Many inspectors have a gold mine of potential repeat clients and they choose not to ever speak to them. They never provide them with consistent, valuable information. Home inspectors assume that their clients will never need them more than once. And that's an incorrect assumption. Following up is about being a consistent value provider. Communicate value on a consistent basis using your social media channels. One of the easiest cost-effective high return on investment things you can do is to give each client a home maintenance book. I love those home maintenance book, books. Internet actually has home maintenance books that help inspectors keep in touch with clients. So just order a free copy. Ask for a free copy today, natchee.org slash now. And that's why I wanted to share. And the coaching sessions are all about asking questions and sharing and answering questions. So anybody have a question? What do you want to talk about? How's business? Joseph? You gotta turn on your 
microphones if you want to talk. Can we test that? Can somebody turn off their microphone and say something? Mm -hmm. Save locked audio. No good? Okay, Aaron, hold on. Do you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it said the host wouldn't allow you to unmute yourself. Okay. I clicked the button and now you should be able to. Okay. Good. I have some questions if I may. Yeah. I've been saving these questions all week. <laughs> um, actually, I wanted to ask some questions about the membership. Um, you, you're saying that Nazi has all these great resources for us and everything, yep. but the majority, do we have to be certified to get um, in regards to the insurance and the security and that call me one, you have to be certified for those? Yeah, like for the call me now buttons, we only want people to call inspectors, certified inspectors, not just any member. Because we have members who are like real estate agents and teachers and things like that. So we don't want people scheduling jobs with teachers and, and real estate agents. So you have to be a certified home inspector and there's six steps to becoming certified. And if folks who are already here are certified, you, you can maybe comment on uh, how I know different- it's Yes. And then um, the marketing, you say that uh, they can help us with logos and getting ready for websites and all that. Can we start working on that now while I'm working on the certification with the marketing yep. department? I yep, can? but you won't, you won't receive the materials until you're certified. So right, just but like, I, can start working on, I can start working with them on that, right? Heck yeah, heck yeah, because it takes a while. Yep, mm -hmm. good question. Yeah, so start, yeah, go ahead. If you got it. Uh, ask to unmute. Matthew. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Ben. Uh, good morning to you. I want to let you know that we, uh, that we all certainly uh, appreciate the, the time that you commit to us doing this. And, uh, uh, and I think I say it for everybody. We're certainly looking forward to the convention next month. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I had a quick question uh, regarding those of us inspectors who are pursuing the, uh, the marketing of the pre-listing inspections. Uh, uh, another discussion another day. Certainly see a lot of value in that. However, I, I did have a question about how, uh, from, from your opinion, from your, uh, from your pro professional opinion, how would you go about marketing the buyback program to clients that you're also marketing pre-listing inspections to? Right. Um, are there open homes or open houses in your area? Yeah. Oh, man. Really? I got to do that every time? I got to ask you to unmute every time? Here we go. Yeah, sorry about that. So uh, currently, the, we are beginning to see a few of them come back. Uh, it's still, uh, still kind of hit or miss. It's, it's certainly, uh, certainly more virtual tours than, uh, than in person. Yeah, yeah. Because the open houses, from what my experience is, those are the new real estate agents. And those are the ones who are always really impressed by something, uh, always impressed by somebody talking to them for for one thing, but then if you uh, mention the buyback program, um, they just can't believe it. So um, I would, uh, that's, that's kind of like, um, I always think of boxing. So marketing is sometimes not like boxing. So boxing is you got have a plan to last 10 rounds or whatever, right? I mean, you come out with this long-term plan. If you can knock somebody out, you, you go for it, right? Marketing is basically not like boxing. Marketing is like a street fight. You got one punch to hit the guy in the face, right? And knock him out. So uh, I would come out with your strongest thing. If you're talking to any real estate agent or a potential home seller or home buyer, um, and the buyback program is pretty darn good because it kind of explains things and we have uh, rack cards and it's a nice logo. And um, I, would start, I would start thinking about what is your greatest three punches to knock somebody out as fast as possible. And your website should be kind of like the same too. And then all of your marketing. Your biggest punch for the, for the dollar is probably um, the buyback program, I would say. I mean, everybody is really, I, we haven't had any problems with it and everyone's really impressed by it and it works. And you can go online and search for the homes that we, we buy and, and it's all always a win-win-win for any agent because when 
a client comes in and they have a problem with the house um, and we buy it back, we use the same agents in the same transaction. So everyone's, everyone's kind of happy with that. I mean, who knows best? Who's the second person in line interested in buying that house? That's the same real estate agent. So it goes kind of quick. So they're happy to, to sell that house one more time. So um, I, I definitely agree. I, I, a lot of value seen in it from both uh, from both yeah. agents and and buyers. Um, yeah. uh, but I guess I guess what I was really trying to hone in on here yeah. is is how I would go about pushing the idea of the buyback guarantee to sellers if I'm really focusing on performing pre listing inspections. Ah, uh, right. Well. Sellers, I, I hand, maybe others can comment, but sellers I handle differently, right? So you want to, um, you want to, you want to make sure that those sellers, almost every seller for me was a new client because people didn't really move very far. But that was when I was doing home inspections. Now it's, now it's a little bit different. So um, back when I was doing home inspections, um, I treated them very differently. And I don't think um, that you have to figure out what you can do with the buyback. For me today, I would offer the buyback for their next home. And I would use move-in certified for pre-listing inspections. Move-in certified puts my report in buyer's hands, basically, because I have copies essentially online or physical copies of my inspection report that I do for the house that's being sold and people come by or virtually see my report and they go around to the next home that they wanna buy, that they're interested in buying. And there's where the buyback program can be applied. It's for really buyers. Move-in certified is for sellers and for real estate agents. I mean, you wanna tell a real estate agent that I'll come in and if you don't want me to write the report because it's a legal document, no big deal. I'll just tell you what a certified home inspector is going to find when you have a buyer show up to the front door with a home inspector. Let me solve those problems right now for you. So it's a different conversation for me, I think it is, for sellers and for buyers. But maybe other folks here in the group can comment on that. How do you use buyback for pre-listing or sellers? Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Everyone staying healthy? Yeah, I got I got I got I got a few questions, man. I, I have a whole list right here. <laughs> Go, Justin. Go. Okay. You can call me Joe. Joseph is when I'm in trouble. Okay. You're Go a Joe. friend, so I can consider you can call me Joe. Um, <laughs> I have a few questions. Um, in regards to um, I had a question I just had it was just, oh the testing, the inspector test that you guys provide. Um, I, I was under the impression, I might be confused a little bit. I, I read a little bit more, but I wanted to get your opinion on it, that the test that Nachi provides is that, will that test be recognized as a uh, licensed inspector? I'm in California, California only needs certification, but now do I have to take the national test again to be, you know, like a, an official a home inspector for the country or whatever? California hasn't formalized anything for licensing yet, right? You're right, but no, they haven't. But will yeah. California recognize NACHI certification once I pass the test? Right, so most states do not recognize InterNACHI's online home inspector yeah. exam. What they will do is grandfather any certified home inspectors. So become certified through InterNACHI, which requires you to take our online home inspector exam. Mm -hmm. And then they'll usually, most states will usually open up a window for grandfathering for those existing certified, trained, qualified, competent home inspectors to become almost uh, easily licensed or recognized as licensed or something like that, right? They will use your certifications or existing certification. So it's important in California and all unregulated states to become certified just in case, just in right. case they- well, see, okay. Right. California requires you to be certified, but if, if they say, oh, just be certified, and then I got certified by NACHI, are they going to recognize NACHI certification? 
Yeah, that's what usually happens. That's in every okay. state. I can't think of any other exception. They usually okay. recognize an existing certification and qualification from an okay. actual and, and then I have another question in regards to the testing. Yep. The way uh, Nachi scores those tests. Yep. Um, I, I took the test like three or four times already, and um, I was I was getting a little bit upset because I keep failing it, right? And um, I have a lot of experience in building, and I keep getting these scores. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm looking. I'm getting like 80, 70, 65, and every, you know, there's different ones, but then I'm getting failed. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why am I failing? And then I, I read something that you guys take a psychological aspect and put it into the scoring. Is yeah. there any way I can make a full breakdown on that scoring? Because um, it's like almost impossible to pass it. <laughs> At the <laughs> end of the exam, it should tell you where you're strong and where you're weak. Right, right. I understand that. And it's like a marketing thing because like it said, okay, well, you're low on this. We offer you these classes and here, take this class and that class. That's fine. You guys get great marketing. That's great. But uh, it's like every time, okay, well, I passed that part. They told me I was weak. And now this week, you're going to tell me I'm low on this part. And I, I can't never get over that hump. So we Is tell there you any way that it breaks it down for me. So we tell you to go to that course where you're weak because the questions on the home inspector exam are pulled from the final exam of the course. In fact, all of the, all of the questions from the home inspector exam come from all of our home inspector courses. Okay. So we yeah, identify yeah. where you missed in the exam. Any of those questions? Person, those are in questions are in the course. Me, is it identifying me personally? Let's say, for example, I did roofing. Yeah. And when I did the final exam in roofing, I kind of messed up a little bit, but I finally passed. Now I'm going to go take the uh, inspector test. When I'm taking yeah. that test, is it prepared for me in the roofing, majority of the roofing, because I had a hard time in roofing? Or is it all just like one template of a test? For everybody. You should see similar, if not exactly, the same questions. Oh, so okay. if you did well in the roof final exam, like a hundred, you know, you should blow through the roof yeah, section blow, blow. On, the, okay. on the home inspector. I, 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 I see how it is now. And now I see the way you guys have it set up. I'm, I'm going to do it right after this webinar. I'm just doing it. Yeah. I know I know what it is now. But I was just wondering if there was like a breakdown and it sets me up for my classes. That would be great because, you know, if I was weak in this area, yep. then boom, I'm right in those classes. Don't let me go anyplace else until I pass where I'm weak at. That's right. They are related. They are de uh, definitely related. So if you take the online inspector exam, which you got to take every three years, and you're weak in something, we'll tell you exactly where you should go and practice. Practice on the quiz questions and practice on the final exam. You don't even have to take the course again. Just practice on the quiz questions and the final exam questions over and over again, and then go back to that uh, home inspector exam. And okay, one more, question about, one more question about the test. <laughs> okay, so because I've taken it three or four times already and I keep failing because of all those things, right? When I do pass it after this webinar, when I start working in California because of the limited certification, do they go back and see my scores? Because I've seen some places where people are able to go into my education and see what my education I have. Nope, it's confidential. That's, that's privilege information only to you. Even okay. staff have restrictions on what information they can see. So it's highly confidential. No one yeah, gets to see your grades. They can request a transcript. Um, and it's really up to you. We even have certificates that you can download without the score. Or with the score, so it's really yeah, up. I yeah, I don't want to seem incompetent where I took the test twenty five times and I couldn't pass it. Why am I going to no. hire this guy? Yep. You know? No, no one sees your failures. No one sees that uh, you can you can fail as many uh, exam questions as and exams as possible. You can you can mess up totally, and no one sees any of your faults. I won't fail no more. Believe that. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just surprised you said grandfather, Ben, because uh, most of your training courses, you said you don't like the word grandfathering. That's right. That's you right. don't. So I'm surprised you said that. We're, so. we're, we're slowly trying to correct our terminology. Okay. One more question. I don't mean to be... Hit, hit it, Joe. Um, uh, I was watching your video. I don't know if it was your most recent one about roofing. I don't know who did the graphics on that with the music and everything. That was kind of... I don't know. 
you you mentioned that the, most of your videos, the only videos you didn't show the training are for asphalt tile because the country uh, three quarters is all asphalt. I'm in California, Palm Springs, the desert, and it's all clay tile, okay. Spanish tile. Do you have any of those videos or any training in those specific tiles? Because I broke my back on those tiles 10 years ago. <laughs> I did. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm retired. I'm going to write myself, like, I'm like writing myself a note for that. We do have really good training for tile roofs. That's excellent, what I need. Excellent training. It's, it's, not in, uh, it's not a majority of the focus of the um, roof course, but we have other roof courses and we go into detail of all different types of roof covering materials. Uh, is that the 10 slate, steps? Yep. Is so that the 10 I'm steps video? Myself a note. I'm sorry? Is that the 10 steps video you did? No, nope. Uh, Joe, why don't you email me, or if anybody wants to know where that uh, other roof inspection training materials are for all types of roof coverings, Okay. You can email me, ben at internachi.org, and I'll send it back to you. But I'm writing okay. myself a note to talk to the ed team to insert more varieties of roof coverings in the roof course, including Joe's tiles. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got one more question. Okay. Okay. Um, when I worked as a contractor, you have to be bonded, insured, and stuff like that. Now things are getting really strict and everything. To become a home inspector, are there restrictions from, let's say, uh, your background 20 years ago, or whatever, stuff like that? Are there restrictions? Um, if you have, um, I want to delicate, if you have like uh, personal confidential restrictions, you can email our attorney and it will be bumped up to me eventually and we can talk. Yeah, because there's, um, there there's something I want to sell myself because I have experience in that, but it might, yep. it might hinder me. It's like yep. a double-edged sword. If you yeah. have any concerns about your qualifications, your history, uh, dumb things uh, I did when I was 18, um, you know, other things like that, you can just email um, me, um, or our attorney, uh, you probably don't have his email. Just email me and we can gather you, together and talk you answer, about it. You, you answer, so I, I'll, I'll email you. Yep. Okay, I'm done, guys. <laughs> I'm interested in, though, um, Brittany, thanks for joining. I just want to know what your goals are and how InterNACHI can help and what, what are you planning on doing? I think I clicked ask to unmute. There you go. I'm going to answer in one sec. My baby's here crying, so I'll answer in one okay. sec. Let me get him away. Okay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> Who else has any, uh, any questions? Who's new? Who's new to the coaching session? Video. Is, it, is it pronounced Manjunath? Yes, sir. Yes, very good. Good to see you, sir. Yeah. Follow up, follow a book. I need to follow I am from last uh, 11 years. Los Angeles? I am, no, I am from Maryland. Where's that? Maryland. I am from Maryland. Oh, Maryland. Okay. I thought LA. Is anybody from California? How are the fires? Who is burning? Burning. They're burning. Yeah. I saw some nasty pictures. They're feeling the smoke uh, effect in Washington, D.C. Hmm. Yes. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm in Colorado and we have our own fires. Too. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Oh, Brittany's back. Oh, ask to unmute. I have to fix this. Ask to unmute. Okay. Hey, Ben. Hi. Yes. So, hey, everyone, as well. Um, I'm here because <clears throat> I was already doing some things within real estate. Um, and then I came across some home inspection information and um, noticed, for one, that there's not very many women doing this, or I don't see very many women doing this. Yep. So I kind of want to get in there and, you know, represent for the ladies here and be just do really, just do 
good jobs. Like show homeowners that women can do just as good as a job as you all, as it men as well. Better. So just kind of, you know, create a lane for us as well. Yeah. I think you have an advantage. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I don't know if it's, a, a, it's not the right thing to say, but um, most of the real estate agents that I came across were women. And mm -hmm. so what I tried to do was not be this like, big, I'm six foot three, 240 pounds, this big masculine guy, you know, I tried to like soften things up. That's why we um, changed our name to Peach Inspections. Peaches are like soft and fuzzy and sweet and all that stuff, right? It was, it was effeminate. Uh, it was, it was, um, it was a way to connect to people that I keep bumping into. Um, there are millions of female uh, real estate agents. Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to do. I mean, even our, our covers, we used to put our inspection reports in peach colored covers, you know, um, just to be more uh, soft and not so aggressive. Yes. And so yeah. um, I, if you and I were competing in the same market, I would have a disadvantage. So you should take advantage of that. Just mm -hmm. kick butt with that. You will have an ability to connect in yes. ways that I would never be able to do. So you have a huge advantage on just being able to communicate. So I'm excited. Thank you for all that you are teaching us as well. Thank you. Oh, thanks. No problem. Anyone else have a question or a comment? Uh, ben, can you hear me? Jim, yes. Yes, yes, I have a question. I've I've got the a couple of certifications. I got some mock inspections to do and it's it's going really well. Um, but, uh, just, just a couple of questions I had, I'm, I'm trying to finalize some of the other things, getting a DBA and all of that good stuff. Mainly it's the, uh, I've, I've looked at the E and O insurance a little bit. Um, just as a basic, do we need to be like an LLC bonded and an E and O? Is that a recommendation? I didn't understand the question. Do you have to be an LLC and have, you know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering uh, if we, if we have the, if we need to get the E and O insurance, yeah. and also have a separate bond, hmm. and is it recommended to be an LLC? Okay, so uh, LLC is a limited liability corporation. It's a type of corporation. It's very common for a home inspector to start an LLC. What you don't want to do is be a sole proprietor because everything that you are and own is at risk mm -hmm. in a lawsuit. You want to protect, you want to limit your liability. So it's an LLC. You want to start that. And no insurance company is going to um, insure you as a sole proprietor. So you have to start a corporation. So you might as well ask your local business attorney to start a LLC. You can do it on LegalZoom for 50 bucks if you wanted to, but it's nice okay. to talk. And then uh, go to your real estate, uh, sorry, go to your insurance company um, and show them that you are incorporated in your state and um, then talk about uh, protecting yourself. Um, you can do general liability and E&O. Uh, E&O is errors and emissions. If you really screw something up, um, gross negligent or something like that, and someone sues you for that, that can, that can protect your, uh, your house essentially, um, the most important thing. Um, and general liability is like, uh, you know, um, everybody should have that. Uh, if somebody steals tools out of my truck uh, on a job, um, it's covered. So just talk to your real estate, uh, sorry, I keep saying that, talk to your <laughs> insurance agent. InterNACHI has an insurance program that recognizes InterNACHI members and certified inspectors um, and provides uh, special pricing um, and, and, uh, and discounts. Uh, you may want to take a look at that uh, program. Um, so those, those are those things. I love, I had a local business attorney um, because um, they, they reviewed all of our documentation. They reviewed our, I had partners. They even reviewed our corporate structure um, and they got familiar with who we are and what we do and all of our, all of our reports were reviewed in the language so that when a problem ever arose and somebody wanted to file a claim or sue us, they were already familiar with what we 
do it in my company and they sent out a letter that usually squashed the complaint and make, made it go away. Although I have been sued. I uh, have been pulled as a home inspector in small claims a, a, a few times. Um, and I've always won because I had that local business attorney. Um, they usually know the local judge and the magistrate um, in the local area. And they also know the other attorneys. So if you have a, a neighbor who's suing you, right, because um, their dishwasher leaked 50 days after the inspection and they find an attorney, um, my attorney usually knows that other attorney. And they get on the phone and they chuckle a little bit and they figure out a solution, a resolution. So it's really, I keep saying this to a lot of home inspectors. You got to have a local business attorney. They're really expensive, but you don't use them all the time, just for a few hours. And then you're set up. And I like that. There's another reason I like going into a home inspection without having to worry because I already have everything all set up. If things go bad, I've got all of my tools. I'm ready to go to defend myself. And one of them is right, to off right with an LLC and getting your insurance and your local business attorney on your side. Okay, perfect. I've got, I've Thank got you. a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, two things actually. One is the marketing department. When they design your logo, is that your logo forever and you keep it or is that something you all still control? That's your logo forever. Okay, and then the second thing is, I know in the, some inspectors. John, just, yeah. uh, just want to follow up with you, John. Uh, yeah. we've, we have sometimes consumers complaining that um, your logo says Internet is certified and then uh, people drop out of certification with Internet. So you have to maintain your certification. Right. That's the only thing. So okay. if, if someone complains, a consumer complains that you're using Internet you certified logo and you're not certified, it goes to me, it goes to our legal counsel and they send out a notice and all that other stuff. So okay. that's all that is. No worries. And then the second question is, I know some inspectors show up an hour early to their inspections yeah. just to do the out exterior. Is that, yeah. is that smart to do as been as far as legal, <laughs> legal aspect? I mean, cause it's like, you're just randomly showing up and um, the realtor's not even there and no one's really there other than maybe the homeowner. I, I think Joe has an answer. I have an answer too. Yeah, that's that's Ben's big thing right there to show up early, but it's suggested <laughs> that talk to your client before you show up. Say, hey, you know what? I'm going to show up maybe an hour or a half hour just to get a feel of the house. Are you comfortable with that? This way, somebody knows that you're there on the property, and that's the best thing you can do. Show up, look around and stuff like that. Figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, set up your, all that stuff. That's Ben's thing. That's the best thing you can do. That's that's what I got from that. That's good stuff there. That's what I do. The person who's scheduling, uh, we were able to grow, you know, and hire an office manager. And she also did our radon tests as well. Um, but she would prep the listing agent with the owner that somebody might show up about a half hour early or so. Um, hour is probably a little early uh, for an eight o'clock job, you know, knock on the door. Um, a vacant that's home, that's for sure. I love showing up early. Where I come from, you show up on time late. So, uh, you know, we like to show up early. And uh, the other tip that I had, probably Joe even knows, is that we wore a, on our backs inspector so that when we showed up early, especially in the morning job, uh, no one shot us for robbing the place. So I wanted everybody to know <laughs> I was the inspector, right? And I was the building inspector. Hey, what are you doing? I'm the building inspector. Oh, okay. So um, I love showing up early because, geez, the first thing I do is go up on the roof and inspect the roof and you ain't coming up with me. And if I can do it in 15 minutes without disturbing anybody inside, heck yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that because I'm going to come down and I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on with the roof. And then we that can do it. already. Yeah. Legally, just it, legally, it's just permission from the homeowner uh, to do that. And that's through their legal representative. So the agent, if you tell the agent, I'll be, I'll be there early. You're covered. Anybody else? That's a good question. I like that. 
Yeah, I had a question about um the House of Horrors. I think I saw yeah. one of your videos. It was going to be online. Is that is that happening? Like where we can do? Yeah, we're, we're gonna try. Yep, yeah. they're closed. We we close them down just until we feel it's safe for everybody and everyone's comfortable and asking staff to like host the House of Horrors. So we have some videos uh, online. We're gonna make some more videos and um, allow people, no matter where they are, to walk through the House of Horrors. I think that'd be really neat. I like 360. It's a little difficult for people to understand how it works, 360 videos, but it's kind of cool. I don't know if you've ever put on like an Oculus uh, 360 virtual reality goggle thing. It's pretty amazing, um, but uh, that is the unfortunate thing. Um, they're they're really cool houses of horrors. We have a third one being built. Um, there's one in Colorado, one in Florida, and one in Pennsylvania being built. It should be done. Uh, well, hopefully before winter, for sure. Opening in the spring, um, and then that'll be another place that we can't visit until this is all over somehow. So I don't, I don't know. Hopefully when. we could get one here in Georgia. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Every, oh, every West Coast. Um, Vin, yeah. not to, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Not to prove it, uh, but they did. The five-day course, the hands-on course. Yeah. And I know you guys stopped it because of COVID and all that stuff. Are you guys going to start it again or maybe somewhere on the West Coast? And if not, if you do start it again, do they, you guys provide uh, the discount for lodging and all that stuff in over there for like two weeks? Yeah. So we do provide yeah. um, discounts when you come, let's say uh, students in the past who have come to the five-day class in, in Colorado, we have discounts and special deals and uh, we re actually recognize people who travel the most. And uh, we, you know, we try to take care of everybody. The actual fee that you pay for the, our five-day class goes right to your instructors. You can ask them um, because um, that's, they're doing that for the money and they're doing that because they're, yeah. they've been asked by us to teach. Um, internet. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so. Uh, I just wanted to know that was the question. We have training partners. Yeah, well, come on over. Yeah. We have training <laughs> partners all over the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to get uh, uh, a training partner in Italy so I can go over and prepare for their classroom, maybe on the beach somewhere, maybe in Rome or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what would you say? I was I wanted to do like um, an apprenticeship, if you will, like shadow um, a home inspector before I get started. Yeah. But what is the way to go about that? Like, I was just going to call a couple people and like maybe offer to pay them for letting me shadow. But is there a certain way to kind of go about doing that? Yeah, you know, a lot of people hesitate, a lot of inspectors hesitate because they don't want to train their competition. That's the, that's the trick. I never had that. I never had that feeling. I, I you can't imagine how many people just wanted to ride with me and it was great. It's great to have a helper, you know, great to talk to somebody, you know, during a long day of inspecting about, you know, the favorite thing I like to talk about is inspecting. Um, and uh, we actually didn't even uh, ask for money, you know? So um, you may find some certified master inspectors like that and certifiedmasterinspector.org has a search uh, engine. You can search for certified master inspectors in your area. We also have a mentoring program where the folks who are listed in our mentoring program have, um, have agreed to volunteer to help people. Um, and if you ever come across a mentor, an interesting mentor who's not willing to help, um, that's a violation. I want to kick them off. So um, the other thing, the, the, the third option is to use our search engine and find an energy inspector outside your market, maybe 15, 20 miles and ask them, you know, hey, you know, can we, can I come along and, and uh, I promise to, you know, with a handshake or something, be your backup if you have an overflow or you can't make it on a Sunday morning or if you have a 5,000 square foot house and you're willing to pay me for my time, you know, you can always call on me uh, and vice versa. Um, I always had friendly competitors. Um, Steve Mento, I still remember him. Steve Mento would always get my extra overflow and he would love it because I was doing all the marketing and uh, 
the phone would just ring off the hook and I couldn't do a Sunday job. I couldn't do four jobs on Sunday. So he would take at least one of them. It's always good to have a, a good relationship like that. And maybe a local chapter might help you as well. Um, chapter presidents usually are in a position to just volunteer their time and they just don't care anymore because they're doing so well. It's hard to find them though. I don't have a, a, a solution for you other than those those tips there. Uh, Brittany, there's a, if you have a local association, that's, um, that's, what I, that's what I did when I first got into the business. Um, local associations will have typically, at least they do here where I am, have monthly meetings okay. where you can meet other inspectors you know, at a restaurant and they'll have a speaker. Okay, thank um, you. I don't know if that's how it is there. I'm in Texas. So. Okay, I'm definitely going to look into that. Thank you. When, when I worked as a construction coordinator for a builder out here in, in the desert, um, my job was to go through, make sure all the trades had everything done the way they were supposed to have things done. It was like a, that was like before they would call it a, a home inspector. It was a building inspector, actually. And I would go in through the track, and I would have the guys, the laborers, say, hey, Joe, let me go with you, man. Let me see what you're doing. And I would, they would just follow me all day long. Now that I started this uh, uh, home inspection thing with the title home inspection, my cousin is an inspector for the city and I tag along with him, but I don't go into his truck or anything like that because of liability issues. Yeah. You know, so I just, I follow him around and see what he did. I said, man, I was doing the same thing. You know, I was just a liaison, but it's the same thing. You know, just find somebody who does that. They'd be more than happy to walk around with you. People want to brag. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> You know, okay, you gotta make you. them feel power and high and everything, and then they'll do whatever you want. Yeah. That's Joe. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Anyone else? Caleb, where are you from? I am from Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Hey. Um. So one of the things that I really loved to talk about was when um, I was a home inspector when I was 23. Uh, you look a little young. Yeah, I just turned 35. Uh, 25, yeah. Uh, no one trusted me doing home inspections. Are you a home inspector now? No, I'm currently, I'm about 75% done with the training. Good, yep, that was my big challenge. And it, I took a long time for people to understand that I knew a ton of information about houses and I can inspect anything. Um, so that was, that's one of your disadvantages. However, it's, a, it's an advantage, like trying to find for Brittany something you know, that would crush other inspectors in the market is that um, you, know, you can connect with, with people your age. There's a lot of folks your age in the 20s lower thirties who are moving new professionals, first time home buyers, and you can connect better than I can. I'm 50 something, right? So um, using social media channels as well, right? Uh, I'm a little, a bit of an old dog. Uh, I don't really learn new tricks very well, but you have that mm -hmm. advantage. You connect with people who um, are of the same age as you, you know? So mm -hmm. don't get, uh, I, I was in your boat being young, and new, but um, don't get uh, discouraged by that. Just wanted yeah. to so I guess kind of to piggyback kind of what Brittany had said, um, you know, I'm trying to find the best way to go about this and even just figure out if this is my career path. Yep. Um, I had thought about seeing if there's a way to join up with someone else, work for someone else, but I'm kind of figuring that's difficult in this industry because why would why would you pay me when you can collect the full amount, you know, but I kind of also at the same time, don't want to waste the money if this isn't my career path on starting up my own business. But the, I think they say, what is it? 70 or 80% of people who graduate from start up their own business. Mm -hmm. Is there any advice that you would have in order to just kind of get my feet wet and um, just to verify, you know, Hey, before wasting all this money, is this kind of where I want to go and any, you know, any advice for that? Um, I would perform home inspections. <laughs> yeah. So perform home inspections on your own. 
Like do it 10 times. See how fast you can do it. See if you enjoy it. See if you enjoy finding problems, even if you've seen it nine times before and writing a report and then printing it out. And I don't know if you have anyone in your family or, or close circle just to share what your house is about, right? Like telling a story, like I said before, right? See if you can actually tell the story and see if you enjoy it. I loved it. Before I was a home inspector, I was a builder. So I had that knowledge and now it's all together. Now I'm inspecting things that other people built. That was really exciting to me. I couldn't stop. So I, I inspected my friends' homes and my family's homes all for free. You know, uh, it's just for practice. And then you can start expanding to like, oh, maybe you'll bump into a real estate agent and say, look, I'm new. I'm not going to, you know, lie to you. I'm new and I'm looking to expand my business. I'm certified. I performed home inspections, but what I want to do is, you know, offer you an opportunity to get your own home inspected, right? And you, we, you and I can get to know each other. And I, if you don't want me to produce a report, that's okay. It's basically just offering and showing you how I perform a home inspection. It's really good the way I do it. So you have to just like expand a little bit. But I so, would just, I would, I would inspect like crazy, any mm -hmm. home, right? Any home, right? And then, and then I went um, out of my market area. So I was in the suburbs of Philly doing home inspections and that's where we made all of our money. But to, um, uh, to go through the school of hard knocks, uh, we marketed to um, Philly downtown. And um, some of those neighborhoods are very difficult and challenging to inspect. So in a very short time, like less than a month, I got so experienced in performing home inspections on extremely difficult buildings that in a month I was like a certified master inspector right I, I could inspect anything if I can do downtown Philly inspections right so there's there's a couple of tricks to the train it's basically inspecting so many times that it doesn't matter anymore you can talk to a real estate agent and say you're you're a master inspector right, right? so and so would it be well, well received Another route that I thought about going, I know quite a few uh, real estate agents in the area and kind of just, just barely outside of my area. Would it be well received to ask them if they have, you know, their, their inspectors that they typically use? Yeah. You know, get in contact with them and say, hey, can I follow you around? You know, you're outside of my area, so you're not direct competition. Yep. Or, or would that kind of not be okay? I think Aaron is shaking his head and a couple others probably have comments, but my, my wife is a, a coach and one of her tricks um, that she um, provides to her uh, uh, clients is that you go up to a real estate agent and you just say, I know that you have your favorite home inspector, mm -hmm. but does someone in your office, is there someone in your office who's, um, who's a bit, uh, who's looking for a home inspector who does weekend inspections? because I perform weekend inspections? Or is there someone in your office who'd be interested in an finding a home inspector who offers the buyback guarantee? So you, uh, you, you kind of pitch to that uh, real estate agent, um, but without um, talking directly to them and asking them for their business directly. Right. You kind of ask so, them, do you know somebody who needs a fantastic inspector like me? Yeah, so um, I guess right now, since I'm not certified yet, just in order to practice and just kind of get a little bit of experience prior to taking the national exam, yep. um, just kind of as a student, is that going to be something that would be okay? Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I, yeah, mean, I, I just don't want to overstep any bounds and kind of make a bad name for myself before I'm even certified. Well, don't perform a fee paid inspection. Right, and correct. If you're certified or licensed or you're, you feel confident enough, you know, you have your business and all that stuff. Don't take anybody's money, right? Until correct. you feel like uh, you can defend yourself if you're sued. As soon as you take someone's yeah. money, right, you're responsible. So yes. I would just have an incredible amount of fun. Um, low investment. I mean, you could be a member of internet for four hundred dollars and get all the knowledge, right? And then you need, a, a, you have abilities because uh, you're a homeowner or you're in your place and you know how a window opens and closes and you turn a thermostat on. So you need to develop those skills, which just takes some experience. You need a flashlight and a GSEI tester. And you're ready to roll. 
just a, <laughs> you need software. Um, and you got to crash and burn on your own with software. Um, I did it on, on mobile devices. Some things just don't work. Uh, first client with new software just is disastrous unless you practice. So practice, 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 practice. That's Mr. my advice. Something. Maybe someone else has advice. Does someone else have advice? Okay. Yeah, uh, can I say something real quick? I turned my, my camera off because I'm eating, but I wanted to say something about what he just mentioned about, uh, you mentioned about doing practice inspections. It's, this was uh, suggested to me, it was a good idea. I did an inspection for my sister at her house. I did a full inspection with the report and everything, pictures, full report. But the agreement that Nachi has, the written agreement, it's a good idea, even though you're not gonna charge him, have them sign an agreement saying there's no charge but in case you, some, you take this report and take it to the developer and say, look, this inspector found this, and then that developer turns around and tries to sue me, I'm not licensed. In the agreement, it says that I'm not licensed, and this is a no-fee inspection. You got to cover yourself in that agreement. It's good to have an agreement, even though it's a non-charge inspection. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to send you a copy of that, by the way, Ben. Yeah. Copy that report. Yeah. Cool, Joe. Right. All right, Joe, what do you think? You know, I have a, I have a home inspection training class live online free tomorrow night, uh, 8.30 ET Eastern, if you're all uh, interested. But if you go to natchi.org slash webinars, um, the online convention workshops, um, I won't be teaching any of the workshops. We got real teachers, right, uh, and experts um, teaching. So I would sign up at natchiorg slash webinars and look for uh, the convention sessions. They're going to be really good. And it's coming up next month. So the convention sessions are, are in October. So I'd sign up for that. Is next year convention going to come to California again? Yeah, we're, I, I signed all the agreements for the convention in 2021. All the hotel discounts, uh, we're ready to roll. So Where is that going to be at? Um, in um, near Los Angeles, near okay. LA. Convention. It's outside. Like cool. It's called Ontario, California, not Ontario, Canada. It's mm -hmm. called Ontario, California. And there's a huge Ontario, California convention. Yeah. We got the whole thing. Yeah. We, we reserved everything. It. Yep. It's like 100,000 square feet of space. It's just ridiculous. So if all goes well, we'll all be in California. In October. Can we start registering for that now? No. Uh, the online convention first, and then after that, we'll open it up for registration for next year. Okay. We didn't want everybody confused. Am I going to California or am I going online? You know, so. Okay, y'all. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, you know, I love talking about home inspections to my favorite people, home inspectors. So I <laughs> want to do this again. I'm ready. Where's that live inspection you're going to do? A live home inspection class tomorrow night, 8.30. Where? Uh, online. Online. It's just like this, but I perform an, I review an inspection that I did. And we go over defects and we talk about business and all that other stuff. And I take questions. Is that on um, nachi.org? forward slash, how do I get there? Webinars. webinars. slash webinars. And it'll link me to the live one? What's that? It'll link me to the live uh, course you're doing tomorrow? Yep. At five o'clock, right? Uh, it's 8.30 Eastern. All right, so it's 5.30 my time. It's Thursday night football, but I'm gonna watch the football game later. Well, Patriots, wow. I see our Steelers back there, Ben. <laughs> oh, good. yeah. That's my Steeler uh, scarf. <laughs> <laughs> they won. They won their first game, so I'm all excited. Yeah, they beat my Giants. Yeah, <laughs> easily. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for coming. Bye, everybody. Right. I'll see you later. Thanks Anytime you need me, email me, okay? Anytime you need me, just email me. All right, I'll thanks, Ben. Bye. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank